Hello everyone, this is John Gall speaking, here with a video for a tutorial slash high level overview of map editing in Project MoCap. For those that uh, have purchased this template, uh, I want to make a series of videos here showing you guys, uh, you know, kind of how you use this, right? So this is not... A tutorial on how it was made it's just kind of you know how you could go about uh, using it for eh, kind of the bells and whistles of how this thing works okay so once you have the project extracted to your project files or UE4 project files or wherever it is that you guys decide to extract it to uh, you just open this project up and this is going to come with a map already created uh, for you guys to, you know, mess around with and stuff like that. But what, what this video is going to be about is to show you guys uh, if you think my map ma making is bad, which it is, <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you guys how you can go in here and create your own map to replace this map or edit this map. Uh, into being something that you know might be a, a bit more in line with what you have in uh, mind okay so once again there's going to be quite a few of these videos so you know I would advise the people who purchased this project to check them all out okay uh, because this is going to show you the inner workings of how this template uh, can be used uh, you know to make some interesting levels and things like that as it is okay so this will more than likely be the map that this comes with um, you know keep in mind that I'm trying to make these videos ahead of the curve okay so it might not look exactly like this okay but uh, anyway you can go ahead and spawn in here and this will be you know kind of what the map looks like right so you got these buildings, you got these uh, <laughs> NPCs, you know, doing some really weird things just for no apparent reason. Uh, you know, you can kill these guys. Right? And I've still got the line trace debuggers on, so that'll be turned off. Uh, but anyway, you can kill these guys. Uh, you've got these uh, pickups for ammo and health scattered around. Um... You also uh, have these weapon stations uh, that you can go in and things like that uh, to switch out to, you know, there's the burst rifle. You can see underneath the health bar, it tells you what weapon you have. So three is a shotgun, four is a beam gun, five is a grenade launcher. And all this stuff's subject to change, guys. This is just a little, hey, let's get ahead of this so that I don't get bombarded and have to make 500 videos in three days, okay? Uh, but anyway, this is the gist of it, right? So this is just a little structure that I put together. It's got some random NPCs scattered around, you know, doing their little animations. You can kill these guys. Uh, you can switch to different weapons, you know, and things like that. And you'll notice off in the distance here that there's just a bunch of hills. And really, these are just to keep the player in the play area, right? So uh, that's all these are for, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of start from here, okay? So let's just pretend for a moment that you guys absolutely positively hate what I've done. You hate the ground, you hate the terrain, you hate the grass, you hate the buildings, you hate the NPCs, you hate the tables, uh, you hate everything, right? Uh, so if you want to start from a clean slate... Uh, what I would suggest you do is hit this perspective button here, go into the top view, and what you can do is you can see this entire little structure that I put together, including, uh, you know, all the NPCs and everything, and just highlight all this, okay? Just like that. Now, you're going to notice <clears throat> that it selects the terrain and the skybox as well. So after you do this, what I would suggest you do is come over here to your uh, world outliner 
and kind of scroll through here and unselect what you don't want, right? So, you know, you could theoretically delete all of it and start from absolute zero, but what I would suggest you do is kind of come in here and just scroll down through here and look for uh, the landscape, right? Okay, so here's the landscape. So let's unselect that. Let's unselect the gizmo. Unselect the light source. Okay? And uh, let's just keep going down through here. There's all the player starts. Okay, so let's unselect the sky spear and the skylight. And you can kind of keep going down through here and having a look at everything. Okay, and then also you can go back here and go back into perspective view. And now you can kind of look around and see that that is all you have highlighted, okay? And you can press delete, boom, and it's all gone, right? All of it's gone. However, it left the terrain, right? It left the terrain, uh, it left the skybox, you know, and all those things, okay? And really, what you're left with is the directional lighting right here. Uh, you're left with the skylight right here. Uh, the terrain, of course, is still here. And there's some volumes that I've added in here. This uh, light mass character indirect detail volume. So if I highlight that, you might not be able to see it because most of it is covered up uh, out here underneath these hills and everything. And then there's a light mass importance volume. Okay? Uh, but, you know, let's just say for the sake of argument, that you don't want the terrain either, so you can delete the terrain, and now you see that you have the character indirect detail, volumes, and all that stuff, okay? And if you actually don't even want these, you can select that one and delete it, and select that one and delete it. And you can also do that from within here, okay? So now, quite literally, we're blank with the exception of our... Uh, landscape gizmo activator which we can delete that right get rid of that uh, and then the light source in the sky sphere in the skylight that's all all that's left okay um, and you know once again you could delete every single bit of this right so um, let's see where does this skylight sky sphere come from I mean, I don't know. If we delete that, we may not be able to get it exactly back uh, the way that it was. But if you want, you can delete the light source, right? You can delete the sky sphere, and you can delete the skylight. And now you quite literally have a completely blank map, okay? Uh, so what you could do at this point is just start creating your map. Right now, one of the first things is that you're going to need a skylight uh, if you plan on doing any kind of outside. Uh, but you know, you could come over here and click this button here that says landscape, and it's going to show you the size of the landscape. Right now, you can mess with these settings and do all that stuff on your own. This is not meant to be an in depth uh, tutorial, it's just an, a high level overview. Okay. So I'm just going to hit create. Bam. Now we have created ourselves a terrain which we cannot see, oddly enough. Right? Now the reason that we cannot see this is because we don't have a light. So if you click the light button here, you could drag in a directional light. Right? And it really doesn't matter where in the level that this thing exists as long as it has one. Okay? So I kind of generally pull this thing up. You know, just to get it up in the sky a little bit to keep it out of the terrain so I don't lose it. Uh, and there you have it, right? So that's the basic starting of level creation here. And, you know, once again, you could leave the terrain out and just, you know, make it a completely indoor map if that's what you wish to do. Okay? But in this demonstration, we're going to kind of do something similar to what I already had. Okay? So there's our skylight, or our sky... Yeah, our directional, dominant direct. This is the sun, right? And, you, you know, there's settings in here you can fool with. You can tint the color. You know, there's a lot of different things that you could do, okay? Uh, 
the, the intensity of it and all that stuff, okay? And uh, once again, we're not going to get too far off the trail here. This is a, just a high-level overview. So now that we have that, one of the next things that we're going to need is a player start. So if you go to basic, you can drag in a player start. And you can quite literally put this wherever you want to. Right? Uh, one of the main things to remember about these things is is that you don't want it you know, stuck down in the ground. Otherwise, when you spawn in, your character is likely to fall through the map. So generally, you pick one of these up. Just, you know, put it up in the air. You can put it all the way up in the air if you want. And then when you do that and you hit play, boom. There you are. Hey, hey, we got our level. Woohoo! All right, and it's complete darkness. Okay? So, to add a sky sphere, right, if you want the sky sphere... Uh, you could come over here. I don't remember exactly which section this is in, but if you type right here, sky, you're going to see that you have uh, a BP sky spear, right? Now, you can see that I just drug this thing in here like this, and uh, there it is. Now, you're going to notice that this one's not the same as the other one, right? The other one, I believe, came in the starter content, right? So... If you want that one, um, I'm not like I said. I'm not sure how we get that back, but I think that if we come down here and do our search for sky, yeah, it's not it's not gonna bring it up. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know how we get that one back, right? So we shouldn't. Have, we probably shouldn't have deleted it. Okay. Um, I mean, I thought that it was in here. Uh, maybe it's just this one that it's, it's edited or something. Uh, directional light actor. You know, they've done something to the one that comes in this default template. Uh, and I don't know, once again, I don't know how, how we can get it back. Um, I really don't. Let me see if there's anything in this level blueprint. We could go about this a different way, right? Um, I want to be thorough in this. Uh, but yet, once again, I don't want to go way out into the hinterland. So, um, let me check the level blueprint and just see if there's anything in here. I think there may be. So, I'm going to go to blueprints, hit this little drop down beside it. We're going to uh, open level blueprint. And yes, there is something in here. Okay, on event begin play, there's this. So, let me show you guys another way that you could go about this. So, say for example, you foobar this whole map, right? Screwed. We screwed it up. We, we want our better sky back, not this, not this one, okay? So, what we could do is we could just create an entirely new map, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the maps folder here. And you can see that this one is actually called test map. Now, before we leave from here, we need what's in that level blueprint. So, once again, I'm going to go up here to blueprints. I'm going to say open level blueprint. And I'm just going to literally copy this right here. Right? That's all that's in here is just this. So, I'm going to take this and hit control C to copy it. Okay? And then, in the maps folder, I'm going to go to... Let me delete this search here. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to say New Level, okay? Now, we got a few that we can pick from, right? So, we could get the Empty Level, this one, or this one. So, if we select this one, right, voila, check that out. Now, we've got something that's more similar to what we had to begin with, okay? So, once again, this is just to show you guys the different ways that you could go about accomplishing the same task. Now, in this, this one's level blueprint, we're going to have to paste in that stuff that we copied out of the other one. So I'm going to go to open level blueprint. And you can see it's already got an event begin play and an event tick in here. I'm just going to take those and delete them. And then I'm going to hit control V and paste all that stuff that we got out of our other one into here. And compile it. And that's that. Uh, now we could save this map. Now you see how this one's called test map. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say save all and hit save. And it's going to ask me for a new name. So I'm going to call this one test map 001. Okay. Now we have created ourselves a new map and we got our cool skybox back. I, I don't know how to get the other one back. I really don't. I've never, <laughs> I've never fooled with it, honestly. So this is one way that you could get it back, okay? Now the caveat to doing what we just did here, uh, you know, first we had to make sure that we got what we had in our, t see, we can double click this map and open it right back up again. So the first thing that we needed to make sure is that we open this one's level blueprint, the default one that this template comes with, uh, open the level blueprint, and we copied this out of the event graph, right? So that's one caveat that I want to point out. So now I'm going to go back in here and open test map 01, 001. And once again, we opened this one's level blueprint and we pasted it in here, okay? That has to be in your level, just so you guys know. That has to be in your level, okay? Um... Now, the other caveat to this is, is that this also has Steam integration and a menu. And it has to know what the name of your map is that you want it to open, okay? So, where that is, is if you go into the multiplayer folder under the blueprints, um, in the widgets folder, there is a... Uh, widget in here called W underscore main menu. If you open this up and you go to the graph actually actually I'm in the wrong cow here. This is actually in a blueprint. It should be in the game instance, the GIMP Steam. I think is where I put this. Yes. So if you open up the GI let me just show you guys one more time what that is. In the multiplayer folder, in Blueprints, there is a blueprint in here called GI underscore MP underscore Steam, which stands for Game Instance Multiplayer Steam. So you have to open this up, and you guys are going to see in here, right here in this section that I have yellow, right here it's telling it what map you want to open to start with. Well, you see how that says Test Map? That's the map it's going to open. If you want this to open your new map, you have to put the new map's name in here, okay? Which is pretty simple to do, right? I mean, we, we just build it. We named it. We know what it's called. Test Map 001, okay? So all we have to do is come in here and take this value here and just put 001 at the end of it. Zero, zero, 001. Enter. Make sure you mash enter. Then compile it and then save it. This is the map that you want this thing to open. And currently, I only have this thing set up. There's only going to be one map. If you guys want to take it beyond that, you know, that'll be your business to figure out. Right? This is a basic template to start from, not a completed game. So just keep that in mind. In this in this blueprint, if you do create a completely new map from scratch, you need to make sure that you put that map's name in here. Whatever you call it. Test. Map 1. Zero, 01. Map. Cool map I made because John Galt sucks at map making. Whatever you name it, put it in here. Okay? Don't change anything else. Just leave it, leave it at that. This is all about map making, guys. Okay, so... Now, there's also one other thing that you might want to do, right? Which is, you know, if we close this and open it back up again, right? So, let's say I close the project down. And then I come in here and I open this up. Watch what happens here. It's broke. It's broke. Let me get a drink here. I'm parched. Ta-da! Look at that. It opens the crappy one back up that we foobarred the skybox on. Okay, so the reason that it does that is 
uh, if you go into settings here and you go to project settings, in here there is a maps and mode section under project, right? Now, this is where you set it to open the map that you want it to open when you open it, okay? So you can see right here it says editor startup map. And if you hit this drop down box, you're going to see that it's got several selections in here. Well, now that we've foobarred this map and we're going to make a new one, and we've already got it set up and ready to go, we need to tell the editor to open this, unless you want to have to manually open that map every time that you open your, your template. So I'm going to say test map 01. Now, we're going to get into the packaging and stuff. There's some other stuff in here that I'm going to go over for packaging this project when you get ready to package your project. Okay, for other people to play the EXE or whatever. So I'm not going to get into that right now. Just know that if you want this to always open your new map that you made, you have to come into the project settings and change it right here. You can leave this one to whatever you want. We'll talk about that one in another video that's in, in reference to packaging this project to distribute to others to play. Okay, so we're not going to talk about that here. All right, so now that I've did that, I simply close this. Now we could just open up our new map by double clicking it here, but I want to show you guys what that does. So now that we've changed that in project settings, when we open the editor this time, uh, watch what happens here. And you know, once again, this is going to be a little bit of a wordy stream uh, video about this because once again, I want to be thorough about this, right? I want you guys to know exactly the nuts and bolts of how you use this template, okay? So now you can see that when we came in here, we're back to the map that we're going to start from now that we foobarred the other one, and we want a, a completely blank slate, okay? So it already comes with a, a player start in it, and it already comes with a atmospheric fog. And you know what? That's actually probably, now that I think about it, that is probably why that other map looks that way, okay? It just dawned on me. So what happens if, I just want to test this, right? This is to show you guys how to use this template and well as well as gather a little information about when things go awry, right? There's always solutions. So if we open back up the test map, the one that we broke, I wonder if we, we type in here at, Mo, look at this, atmospheric fog. Now, what happens if we drag this into our level? Uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe that ain't what it what I thought it was. I thought maybe it was because we had the atmospheric fog missing. You know what? And another thing that we could do, I want to get to the root of this because, you know, this is really the probably about the third time that I've ever done this and I'm like how do we get the other one back I don't want this I want the clouds back damn it so <laughs> let's go back into this test map 01 and I'm going to say don't save here I just wonder out of curiosity if we could take the sky sphere and if we hit this Right, so that's the light source. I'm trying to figure out where this thing comes from. Right, so it's a light source, light component, inherited. Where is this sky sphere? Why is this so magical and it has clouds and the other one don't? Inquiring minds want to know, but it don't look like I'm going to be able to figure it out, right? So I don't want to waste too much time on this. I'll do that in my own time, but that's intriguing to me. Where does this thing come from? Right? It has to come from somewhere. I just don't know where. But anyway, whatever. Moving right along. Uh, these are supposed to be a little bit humorous, too, because these things tend to be boring. Okay? So, what we can do now is we can take this little panel here, and we could, we could, we could literally just say, okay, here's our map. Right? Now, here's another thing that you're going to notice is broken. Hey, wait a minute. We're a stupid this and a stupid that, and where's our character, and why is everything broke, and this, this is some BS. 
Right, so there is another thing here that we need to do that I forgot to mention, which is uh, if you come up here and go to settings and you go to, you click this button here that says world settings, we need to tell this level what game mode it uses. Right, so if we hit world settings here, uh, you're going to see that right here for game mode override, it's set to none. We need to set that to MP underscore GM, which is a game mode that I created for this template, right? So it's important that you use this. Uh, so we need to set that. Now when we spawn in, now, now we have our character and everything's good to go. Uh, the problem here is that, uh, yeah, we don't have a, uh, so you can come in here and shoot and do all that cool stuff. We don't have, we don't have a freaking map. Right, we screwed it all up because I suck and that's what I do. And this is supposed to be a demonstration to show you guys how to fix disasters and use this template. So now what we could do is we could just, you know, come in here and start saying, all right, screw it. We're just going to make this big and we're going to make it fatter and wider. And we're going to use this as our little platform. Hey, look, we got a map. Woohoo! So that's one way that you could do it. Uh, or you could just take that and delete it. Right? Yeah, we don't want that. And we're also going to delete out the player start. Okay? And, uh, yeah. So, now let's let's not delete the skybox this time. How about that? Okay? So, now we can come over here and create ourselves a landscape. So, you know, that shows you where it's going to be. Uh, and we're just going to hit create. Once again, there's some things in here you can tinker with. Right? That's for you guys. And we're going to say create. Bam! Now we have a landscape, and I'm going to hit place actor here. Uh, so we get back to this menu. So now we have checkerboard bill. This is actually a sculptable terrain that you can sculpt and mess with. Okay? Now, generally, here's what I like to do. There's a couple things in my map that I like to have in my map. Okay? Um, and one of them is a sky sphere. Right? So if we come over here to lights... And we select our sky sphere, and we just drag that in. You're going to notice it changes, right? It changes the uh, color of the environment, right? So look once again without it and with it. And what this does is this helps light up the shaded areas uh, of your map, okay? And also, since this project comes with the starter content from Epic Games in it, we also have something else to help fancy this up and make it look a little bit better, uh, which is a cube map for the lighting, okay? So how we add that here is we make sure that we have our uh, sky sphere, skylight selected, and uh, we hit details here. And right here, you're going to see where it's asking for the source type. We need to change that to SLS specified cube map. And if we hit this drop down here, you're going to see that there's that uh, Epic Games cube map that comes from the starter content, which is included in this project. And you can select that. And now that'll give us more realistic lighting. And once again, there's settings in here that you can tamper with. You can tamp the shadow color. You know, this is not meant to go that far. Okay. So there's that. Now, another thing that I like to do is I like to add a light mass importance volume and also a character indirect detail volume. Now, the purpose of these things is to focus your light building when you build lighting in here. Focus this on the area only that you're going to be playing in. So it helps speed that up uh, and stuff. And it also makes things look a little better, I think. And so to add that, you just simply go back to, uh, vo you go to volumes here, and you know, you can spread this out and so that you can really read it, but I kind of remember. But really what I'm talking about here are these two volumes right here. And it's just a, a volume. So you could drag this in, right, and put it here about in the center of the map or wherever your play area is going to be. And then you can either you know, hit your widget here and rescale it that way. Or what I like to do is just come over here and manually put those in. Make sure you're in the details panel. If you've got that selected and you're in world settings here, you're going to be in a world of hurt because that's not where that's at. It's here. So you select, if you want the details of something, 
you select it and you make sure that you're in the details panel okay so we're going to select our box here and we're going to start out pretty small once again because I, I just this is just a demonstration of how you guys can make your own maps okay so I'm going to take the X and I'm going to say this is going to be 10,000 and then we're also going to do the Y we're going to do 10,000 Right, and I think I actually made that bigger. So, one, zero, 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 zero. There we go. That's better. And then you can also adjust the height. And I generally put mine to about 1,100. Because this, this is, uh, you know, you ain't got flying in here. And then I kind of pick it up, you know, and stick it just barely down into the terrain. Something like that-ish. Right? So, there's our lighting volume now you could just leave it at that but once again i like to use this light mass character indirect detail blah 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 right because this helps light up your character's shaded areas okay so i drag one of these suckers in too, put it about in the middle of the map and i remember how big i made this one so i want this one to be just a little bit smaller than that one so that it fits inside okay so i'm going to make this one nine 9,900, so 9,900, right? And then I'm going to make this 9,900. So it's 100 shorter, essentially. And then in the height, I made that other one 1,100, so I'm going to make this one just 1,000, a, a, a okay? And then same thing, I'm going to kind of grab the little widget -a digit here, and I'm going to move it up. And just poke it down into the terrain a little bit too, right? Something like that. So essentially, you've got one box inside the other is what that amounts to. you got your character indirect detail inside your uh, light mass importance volume, okay? And now, at this point here, you can go ahead and build your lighting, right? So, hey, we did it. We made a map and we're cool. Sometimes this can take long, you know, a long time. And if your PC has got a bad, slow processor in it, I feel sorry for you guys. I really do. I get so sick of building lighting. I could die from it, honestly. But, you know, whatever. All right, and so when it's all good and done and everything, uh, you know, you're going to check and see if you have any errors. Right? None. And then we go ahead and hit save all. Bam, and we've just saved our shiny new map. And now, at this point, we have a map and a terrain, right? So now we're getting somewhere. Now, let's pretty this thing up a little bit, okay? So let's, t and once again, this is a high-level overview of how you create maps in Project MoCap. And oh, by the way, anyone who purchased this, I would like to say congratulations to you because you got a bang-up template here. This thing is pretty snazzy. I built it, right? So I know. <laughs> so you guys are learning from the guy who actually built this, which ought to matter, right? I take the time to thoroughly go through here and show you guys how to utilize this template, and that should matter. God, you talk too much. Just show me how to make a map, stupid. Nobody even cares, right? So let's move this along a little bit here. All right, so now, you know, once again, I have the starter content in this. So you have access to some things, that you can use freely from Epic Games. So, one of them is, uh, yeah, so what, what's up with all this checkerboard nonsense on the terrain, right? Well, what you can do is, uh, you know, you could come over here into the asset packs. This is where I put all the stuff to keep it separate from all the, the good stuff, right? All this stuff's important. These are where all your master blueprints and all that stuff live. Don't, don't friggin' ever delete that, but if... You do want to jettison something. Uh, don't delete the animations. But there's some things in here that you know you could get rid of the starter content if you're not using any. But really, there's no reason not to have this in here. This gives you something to work with. Okay? So inside here, there's a bunch of stuff, right? you got architecture pieces. There's some audio stuff. Uh, there's where that HDRI image lives. Uh, there are some blueprints, right? 
So, wouldn't it be funny if that's where this damn skylight blueprint is? Assets. Hey, there's the skybox. What do you want to bet that's part? Well, anyway, getting off on a tangent here. But anyway, there's some stuff in here that you guys can use. I know you guys are full with this all the time. So, you can take into the materials, for example. Uh, you got, you know, ground grass. But you could also use this, right, if you wanted to make a desert-ish area. And once again, this is not my forte, guys, just so you know. I'm not good at the artsy-fartsy stuff. I'm just showing you guys just enough to get you started here. So what you could do is you could go to World Settings. And if you click the terrain, actually, I just told you wrong. If you click the terrain, just click anywhere on your gray dot area here. Go to Details, and you're going to see right here you can put in a landscape material. So you could just drag that gravel out into the world and drop it on your terrain. That's one way you could do it. Uh, you could select it here and say, hit this little arrow which says you selected asset from the content browser. Or alternately, you could just friggin' drag it over here and drop it. Right? It's, it's highlighting it in green and saying, hey, it goes here, stupid. Right? So once you get that put over there, it's going to take it a minute to compile some shaders and all this. And hey, look at that. Right, so now we got a terrain, and it's not gray, uh, grassy rolling hills like I like to use. But once again, you know, you could do whatever you want. You could freaking just do moss, right? uh, or you could just do the ground grass. It's up to you guys. You could even do it in metal or rust, whatever. Doesn't matter. But uh, that'll show you how you can put. Uh, and there is a way to make a material that can do all three of these. But once again, guys, this is not for that. That's a more advanced than I want to get for this. Uh, so we're actually just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to make it dirt, right? I said we was going to do dirt, so we'll do dirt. All right, so there you have it. And now we have a sandy-looking dirt terrain, okay? Now we're going to go over the sculpting tools really, really quickly, okay? Okay. Uh, I don't want to, like I said, I, we've got a lot to go here, and I don't want to get stuck in all that stuff. So, um, I like to generally speed my camera up to about four or six. Six will be good. So, you can hit that little drop down there, and you can speed your camera up, and that give you a faster camera, okay? So, what I'm going to do here is just kind of give you guys a little quick and dirty uh, sculpting 101 lesson <laughs> which I'm terrible at so if you go back up here and hit your landscape tool you've got sculpt and there's some smooth flattens ramps you know there's a bunch of different things in here but I generally just leave it on sculpt okay and now when we come back in here you're gonna see that we've got a, a sculpting tool and you can change the settings of it the size the intensity all that stuff I generally just leave this thing default. And if you left click, watch what happens. Hey, look at that. We created a hill. Oh my God, we're awesome. Right? So that's kind of how the sculpting tool works. Right? So if you left click and pull up, you know, you can start pulling up some mountains and some terrain and stuff like that. Now, alternately, you can hold shift and instead of going up, it'll go down. Look at that. So we can create valleys and stuff. And once again, guys, this is just to... Uh, high level overview stuff and if you want to straighten that back out again you could go in here and select flatten and if you pick a flatten a flat area and then just do that look it'll pull it back up flat again right? and then it'll it'll push those hills back down again right so that's how you uh, sculpt your terrain quick and dirtily and there's a bunch of different stuff in here you guys can mess with uh, you know there's a uh, a smooth tool where you can come in here and try to you know smooth the edges out if you get it a little too rough see there you can do that kind of stuff and then you can go over here and go back to sculpt All right and then if you really want to get fancy you can pull up some mountains like this and then you could go to your flatten tool like this and you could start flattening at the top look watch this bam and now we can flatten out Hey, look at that. We just made a plateau, right? So there's a bunch of stuff you can get in here and fool around with. Uh, so I'm not going to get too way off into that. But really, what I do is you see my volume here that I put in? This inside this volume is going to be the play area. 
All right, so what I want to do is actually just uh, kind of flatten this back out again. Let's just start this process over a little bit. Let me just show you guys what I, what I did. So keep in mind that where these volumes are, that is going to be your play area. Okay? So I'm going to go back over here and go back to Sculpt. And here's how I did this, right? So I basically just traced around that, right? So I started kind of on the, you know, maybe about in the middle of this. And I just started pulling some hills and stuff up like that. And I kind of went around the whole outer area of the uh, boxes that I put in. And, you know, guys, you could seriously spend all day just coming in here farting around with this stuff just to make it look, you know, the way that you want it to. But generally speaking, I just outlined a little trail around uh, those volumes like this. Oops. Something like so. Let's just go ahead and pull up some stuff here. Okay, so essentially that's what I did, something like that. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit play, even though we don't have a player start. And essentially that's what I did. Of course, mine was bigger than this. Uh, you know, you guys will have to come in here and decide how big you want your map to be. But the idea here would be that your character indirect detail volume and your light mass volume needs to encapsulate the area you intend for them to be, to be playable, right? That way it focuses its best lighting building baking on that area, okay? So that's the general gist of that. So there's map making 101, okay? Now, um, another thing that I would like to talk about is the structures that I created, okay? So if you go into your architecture... Uh, folder, you're going to see that you've got some floor panels, some wall panels, some's got windows, things like that. So generally, I just pull in a floor panel, right? And you see it's clipping under the ground. So I pull it up like this and then press end on the keyboard and it'll snap it right down to the ground, right? Whoa, maybe we need to slow this camera back down now. Yeah, that's a little better. Or alternately, you know, you could come in here and eyeball it. Like that. And you could also, you know, turn on your snaps, turn them on or off. I generally leave mine on because it just makes things snap together. And now what you could do at this point is that's just a plain gray slab. Right? You see it? So you could go back to your materials that come in this starter content. And once again, there's a ton of stuff in here. Uh, you got these concrete tiles. You could literally drag that and drop it onto the tiles. See there? Now we got uh, some concrete tiles going on. You got poured concrete. You can put that on there. Uh, concrete grime, you know, uh, panels. There's a bunch of different things that you can do. But once you get you one picked out, like, for instance, I like to use this one a lot, um, then you can kind of start snapping it together. And if you click it in the map, hold down Alt and drag, it'll duplicate it. Right? So now that you've already put the material on it, now you've got the material already on it. So now you can commence to snapping these things together. And literally, they're just, they'll are just they snap. You see the snaps? Snap, 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 snap. You just butt them up against each other, just like that. And you can adjust your snap settings up here and all that stuff. Uh, and then you just drag you out a few. Right? And say, okay. Uh, that looks good. That's excellent. We're awesome map builders. We're all pro. And then you could take and uh, hold down control and select all three of them. And now you could alt again and drag out that and it'll move your widget. So don't panic. And then come over here and snap them together. Like that. Bam. And it'll have these lines and stuff in it until you rebuild your lighting again. But now we created ourselves a little concrete pad. And once again, guys, roll with it. Do whatever you want to do. Right? Everybody's got their own taste of how their maps ought to be. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you look at this uh, panel, you're going to notice that uh, the floor panel is 400 by 400, right? Well, if you look at your wall panels, you got some that are 400 by 300, 400 by 400, 500 by 500. You know, well, generally you would want to use the same size wall panel, 
right? Generally, you guys can do whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to drag in a 400 by 400 wall panel like that. Right? And uh, once again, you know, you just drag it over here. You can press end. It'll snap it right down on the ground. And then you butt it up against that, right? Like that. And then you might want to make sure that you put it in the corner, like so. And uh, then you just drag on what you want it to look like, right? So back in our materials again, uh, let's go with the uh, new clay brick. Oh, we're in the shadow. We can't see. But there's what the new brick looks like. And also, you know, sometimes I like to do this just as a pro tip for you guys. It's kind of hard to see to snap all this stuff together with the lighting on. So if you come up here and go to lit, turn it to unlit. Now look at that. Magically, now you can see a lot better. And then when you play, it's only the editor, right? So when you play, it's still going to be the way that it ought to be. But that right there helps me work. Right, I can see better and work faster. So we can drag out another wall panel, snap it together. I mean, this is not rocket science here, guys. Uh, and you just start building you some little structures, right? Uh, now, for the stairs, there are... Um, let's see here. Where the hell are the stairs, actually? <laughs> Show you how much I use this stuff. Here we go. So we got some curved stairs. These are just, you know, BSP. And look. It put that material on that I had selected, right? You see that? So, if you don't have a material selected, right? So, let's just click off everything. And you drag it in, it's going to give you the checkerboard, BSP, right? There's you guys another little quick tip. So, if you want to paint your stairs, uh, kind of have in mind what you want your stairs to be painted as, textured as, uh, you know, like say for example, we might want to use this uh, poured concrete and we're going to drag in linear stairs this time. Bam. Now it puts the concrete already on them. And of course it looks like crap from the side. You can tell it tiles bigger than anything, but the front, eh, maybe it don't look too bad. Whatever. But see, here's the thing. If you drag it in, you know, just one, look what happens, right? So it just, it literally puts them on one at a time. So the better way to go about that would be, okay, what do we want these stairs to look like? Uh, let's do the stone brick, right? And you drag in your stairs. Hey, look at that. Right? So there you go. And, you know, you can drag these around. It's a little weird working with BSP, but whatever. Right? So you can put that in the corner. Nobody puts baby in a corner, but we just didn't. So see there, now you got some steps. You can go up. Whatever. Um, and you know, you can go through here to your heart's content, right? There's freaking walls that's got, you know, doorways cut out in them. You could paint them whatever you want. And then you got, you know, a little model that's got a doorway you could go through. Um, let's see, what else have we got here? Oh, there's some props in here as well. So if you go to the props folder, you're going to find some bushes in here like that. Uh, you're going to find some chairs, some kind of frame corner. I don't know what the hell that is, but we don't want it in there. You got a bench, right? You got some, uh, you know, tables. There's there's a few props in here uh, that you can fiddle around with. Hey, look at that. We got a bush. Woohoo! Right, now another thing that I would like to mention is that, okay, so this bush, for example... Check this out. Just to, you know, once again, this is just high-level map making 101. Uh, for the guys that, this is a courtesy video for the guys that buy this template from the uh, MoCap Online guys, right? So this is not meant to be a an exact how you do things. This is just a high-level overview. Uh, but what you can do is you've got this foliage tool here. You see this thing? This thing right here is pretty badass, just to be honest with you. It says drop foliage here, right? So you could take your uh, bush and you could drag it right here, right? And now watch what happens when we paint. Look at that. Now be careful with this, right? Because you can blow your computer up with this thing. But uh, once these shaders get compiled and everything, you're going to notice that we're in the bush now. Look at that. We're in the bush. Look at that. 
And you can do more than just bushes, right? So you could just say, all right, screw it. We're putting chairs too. Now look at this. <laughs> it's just something for you guys to screw around with. And once again, once the shaders and uh, stuff get done compiling, you can paint with anything, right? You could put wall panels in there. Uh, you can adjust the sizes, brush size. You can adjust the size of the uh, meshes. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. I just wanted to show you guys that. Something neat to mess around with. You mean I have to put a freaking tree every single place that I want? No, you don't have to put a freaking tree uh, every place that you want. All right, look, there's 136 instances of that uh, removed. We'll just go ahead and remove them. Okay? All right, then. So now we can go back to our place actor, and we're back to where we were. Okay? And there's freaking door frames in here, you know, there's uh, some kind of a static mesh door, right? So if you don't want nobody going in, there's glass in here. You could put glass in your doors if you want. You may have to resize it, whatever. But once again, we're not getting all the way off into that. But uh, there you go, right? So really, you just kind of take these pieces and snap them together how you want them. Look, there's a rock. A rock, son. Hey, look, and it has no uh, collision, by the way. All right, so there is that, and I guess I'm, I might ought to go ahead and mention this, just for inquiring minds. Some of this stuff don't have uh, collision. Well, if you want it to have collision, and it don't have collision, well, you open up your asset, right? So this is the static mesh rock. And if we go to uh, collision here, it looks like it's got it. If you click this tab that says collision, it looks like it's got it, but obviously uh, it does not. Right? See that? We can walk right through it. Uh, so what you could do is there's a couple ways to go about this. Uh, you go up here to collision, and you could add uh, you know, a simplified collision, a capsule, a box, right? Well, here's what that's going to get you. So, look, it put us a collision on, all right. And we could come in here, and now we can't go through our rock anymore, but you can see that, yeah, that collision don't necessarily match that rock, okay? Uh, so, what I like to do is, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and remove that collision. So, I'm going to go back to collision and uh, delete selected collision, what I like to do is just come over here and mash this button right here under convex decomposition. You see that? I'm going to go bam and hit apply. Now watch this. This is magic. Hey, look at that. It created us a, it created us a uh, collision and it matches the rock a little better. Now guys, 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 guys. Don't do this for every single object. Right, because there's no need for doing this if it does not require it. Okay, this is costly. Collision is costly in a game engine. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Okay, you can't do this for every single little freaking mesh. But you know, if you do have something with complex geometry that does not have collision, and you want it to better match, that's the uh, a way you could go about it. So now you can see that. We do have collision on our rock and all that stuff. And it matches more, mo better uh, than it uh, uh, did the other way. Okay? All right. And now with that, uh, that's pretty much all I want to talk about when it comes to map making. Now, okay, well, one last thing. And then we're going to move on to some of the proprietary assets that are in this template. Not just the uh, starter content that you use to make uh, maps and stuff with. So let's say that you finally make your big, huge building, right? And it's, it, it contains a, a chit ton, a metric chit ton of individual asset modular pieces, right? And you spent hours building your little structure. Uh, but yet, you want to move it. And you don't want to have to go through here and select every damn little object that you used to move it, right? So I'm going to hit Control Z here and put that back. So there's a couple ways that you could go about this. You could go in here and select every little object, hold down control and make sure that you select every single little object and move it. But the far better way would be to go to perspective and go to top, find your little awesome map that you've done. See it right there? See it? And select it, 
right? And try not to select these skylights and all that crap, right? Just select that. Now, same as before, it selects a lot of things that we may not need, right? So, guys, seriously, you're going to have to learn this on your own. We know we don't want the sky sphere, right? We know we don't want the landscape. We don't want the landscape gizmo, right? But it looks to me like uh, pretty much all the rest of this is a go. So we can come back in here and go to perspective and check it out. We've got it all selected. Now you can move it at this point. You've got it all selected. So you can see here that we can move the entire thing. Now that BSP stairs thing, it's going to be a little funky. Right? See how it leaves it over there? It does bring it. It's just weird that way. But what you can do here now is right click this. Go to group. And you can say group. Bam. Now what it did was, is it took all those little individual actors and put them together as one object, right? So now you can move it around wherever you want to, and alternately, you can hold down Alt and drag out a copy of it, and then hold Alt and drag out another copy of it. So guys, as you're building your little modular structures, you might want to build them in floor panels and wall panels so that you could drag it out somewhere and change the interior, right? Then again, you might just want to make duplicates over and over and over of the same exact structure, right? So there's a way that you could do it. And you could also, just so you guys know, if you select it, right click and say, go to groups and say ungroup. Now you can put it back to singular objects. Now this one is still grouped, right? But this one now, however, is back to you can select the individual assets, okay? So there you go. There's a uh, cool little pro tip for you. Build you a bunch of modular pieces, group them together, and then you can combine structures in, you know, many different interesting ways. Now, the only other thing that we didn't talk about, really, is lighting, okay? Lighting, lighting, lighting. Lighting is a whole beast in and of itself. So you can see that, you know, we got some pretty intense shadows going on here, Okay? Now, that skylight that I was mentioning to you guys, what I want to show you here is we're going to go back to lit mode. So if we select our skylight, wherever the Sam's Hell it is, it's in here somewhere. Hey, look at there. There it is. All right. So we could come in here and we could tamper around with the color. Now, guys, this only affects the shading, the shadow area. As far as I know, this only affects your shadowed areas. So what you could do is you can come in here and you could tamper with the lighting. Look at that, right? Now remember, look right here where the sun's shining. You see it right here? I'm pointing right at it. Now as we're fiddling around with the color, look, it doesn't change that. This is only your shadow color. So you can, you know, tint it a little bit to give it a little bit of a ambiance. Once again, this ain't my area, guys. This is not. This is above my pay grade. Okay, now another thing that you could do is uh, you can come in here and say it cast shadows. You could uncheck that, right, and see how that works. You could also uh, uncheck effects world. Now look at that. So you can see the difference having a skylight makes in your scene. It lightens up those shadow areas quite a bit. But there's also um, intensity, right? So you can take your intensity and you can do this. Look at that. See how you can brighten up those shadow areas quite a bit? See that? And once again, this is artistic stuff. This ain't my job. I quit. I didn't sign on for this. But you guys can go in there and fool around with your shadows. Kind of get them, you know, to be not quite as dark. Right? Uh, or alternately, uh, you know, you got a threshold you can mess with in here. There's a bunch of stuff. You guys will just have to fiddle with that. I'm not going to sit here and do that on... Uh, this video. This is a high level overview. So I'm going to set all that stuff back to default. Um, let's see. There was something. That, oh, okay. So alternately, you've got freaking lights, right? So if you go to your lights tab here, uh, you got spotlights, right? So you can bring in a spotlight and you can rotate and fiddle with this thing as much as you want. Uh, you can set it to static and you can also set it to station, stationary. And you can also set it to movable, okay? Now, guys, 
once again, this ain't my area, but I'm pretty sure you can't have, you know, all your stationary lights uh, be movable. But what happens is, is that, you know, it has to be a certain type of light to interact with certain types of objects, right? So once again, this ain't my area. You guys will just have to fiddle with it. And Unreal will scream at you, right, if you've uh, done something that you shouldn't do. Like, for example, uh, if we bring in a point light, right, and we put it right here, and we set this one to be, uh, let's just leave it as what it is default. And if I drag another one out, and another one out, and another one out, oh, look at that. Now it's already telling me, hey, stupid, you've got too many lights over, you know, friggin' overlapping each other. You can't do that, retard. And that's what that basically means. Right? However, if you do that same scenario again, hey, look, now that one's busted. Well, watch what happens if you change them to static. So I'm going to change that one to static. I'm going to change that one to static. And I'm going to change that one to static. And that one to static. Now you can have as many of them as you want, and it doesn't care. The problem is, is that, you know, some of these lights will not interact with movable things right so like if we put let me see if i can demonstrate this i don't want to give you guys bad information so let me see uh if let's see here where is where is mr mocap right we're fixing to get into him anyway so uh modus man blueprint so i'm gonna go ahead and drag one of him in here okay so now if we spawn into the level well you can see that the lights hitting him but if we put an animation on him and we'll get to this in just a second guys there's one of these that it won't work on right and i don't remember exactly which one it is well it looks like it's lighting him up there so apparently that ain't the one so let me delete some of these out here i just want to make sure that uh you know you guys get this one of these top lights will not interact with this guy all right, so that one apparently does. Uh, if we set it to stationary, maybe it's after you build. Oh, it is, right? So we got to actually build the lighting. All right, so let me go ahead and mash this build button here. I just want to make sure that you guys get this. And once again, th take this with a grain of salt, right? Because this is not my forte. I hate lighting, by the way. If I had my way about it, I'd make all maps dark and you had to run around with a flashlight. There's a whole art in and, in and of itself when it comes to lighting scenes. And that is a skill set that I do not possess. Okay, so now that we've built the lighting, let's see what the result is here. So now when we play, hey look, it's still, it's still, uh, you know, it's still interacting with him. Which one of these is it? Damn it. Maybe it's static. So... If I build lighting yet yeah, again, I just want to make sure that I get this right. Maybe it was the spotlight. One of these freaking lights, it will not light something that's animated. If it's set to, like, static, I think. We'll see. This video is already turning out to be a lot longer than I intended it to be. But once again, this is for the people that buy this template. I want you guys to know how to use it so that we can not have 50 million questions every other day. How do I add a light to my map? How come your map sucks and I want to make a new one? Why did you do that? Right? So I'm giving you guys the tools necessary in order to be able to come in here and edit this thing however you wish for it to be. All right, so here we go. Now that I've set it to stationary and build it, look what happens. Look, that light is not interacting with him. You see that? And it's because he is animated. And when we bake the lighting, it baked it on him while he wasn't moving. And now that he is moving, the light's not going to, uh, you know, work out the way that, it, that you would expect for it to. Now, remember, all we did was set that to static, right? So if we set it back to stationary or movable, that issue does not exist. But once again, if you have that set to stationary and you start putting too many lights together, right? It's going to crack the shits and tell you that it ain't going to work, right? So all your lights cannot be that way. That's what I'm trying to say here. So you need to pick and choose and use these 
cautiously. And they are costly too, by the way. So, unless you really want something to be extremely detailed uh, when it comes to your lighting, I would suggest not using those. Right? I would use static lighting. Uh, but once again, sometimes you need it to be dynamic, right? For instance, uh, if we wanted to put a spotlight on this dude and we want to turn him this way and we want this spotlight to display our marvelous little character, right? We build the lighting and this is set to stationary. So this should, he should be able to, the light should interact with him, even though he is uh, animated. However, if we put that to static, it will not, right? So just keep that in mind as you're lighting your levels and things. All right, we're getting ready to move on to the uh, proprietary stuff, which is this Modus Man, by the way. <coughs> They're nothing fancy, but I want to show you guys how you can use and manipulate them as well, okay? All right, so now when I play, is the light not messing with him? Right, it's not. So see there? That uh, spotlight that we put on him is not lighting him. Why is that? Well, it's because he's animated. So once again, we have to go in here and we have to set this to uh, probably movable in this instance. All right, so if we build this, let's just see here. I think if you hover over this, it'll give you a better description than what I'm giving you. Movable lights can be moved and changed in game. Totally dynamic, whole scene dynamic shadow, slowest rendering, and then a stationary light will only have blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna read all this to you, but you know, guys, hover over is your friend in this engine. Uh, you know, Epic Games has went above and beyond uh, for you know, trying to make this uh, so easy a caveman could do it. So hover over stuff and read it. Okay, now you can see that the light is actually interacting with it. All right, all right. So now let's move on to the MoBeta stuff, now that that stuff's out of the way. Okay, so this template, for those who purchase this, this also comes with some... Uh, demo animations and some demo characters, okay? So what I want to talk to you guys about now is Modus Man, right? So in this template, if you guys go through the uh, folder structure and you go to characters, uh, under Modus Man, go to blueprints, and you're going to see that he has a blueprint in here. And he also has, you know, a few demo animations, okay? Now, once again, these are not for the gray, for the gray mannequin. The, this is a custom skeleton from the guys at MoCap. Right, this is their their proprietary uh, character and animations for the proprietary character. Okay, now you could likely come in here and retarget and do all that crap and get them to work on the gray dude, uh, but I'm not going to cover that in any of these videos. Right, this is just a oh by the way kind of thing that comes with this template for you guys. Um, so anyway, you can have as many of these guys in your map as you want, right? And you just literally drag this dude in here, wherever you want him to be. And of course, you don't want him to be like that, right? So if we spawn in here, hey, look, he's the sand people all of a sudden, right? So what you'd want to do is grab him and, you know, bring him up to where his feet are touching the ground. As best you can, you might not be able to get it perfect. Uh, the way I set this up, this is not a playable character. This is only a pawn uh, that you can put in here to do some cool shizzle with, okay? All right, so now that we've drug him out into the level and we spawn in here, you can see he don't do anything, right? So I've made a lot of the parameters on this thing. I should actually call this Master. I, know I might rename it, but whatever. Um, once you drag him out into your level, remember I told you guys if you select something in your level... You've got world settings and details, right? So select Modus Man in your level and make sure that you're in the details panel. And right here under default, you're going to see a couple things, right? One of them is the demo animation. And the other is the death animation. And then there's a respawn timer. Now I have a default value already set in here. This is likely to get zeroed out. Your master characters are not supposed to have any values in them, really. 
Uh, but anyway, that's the rate at what he will respawn when you kill him. Right? So right now, we don't have an animation or anything on him. So if I come in here and I kill him, watch this. Okay, so maybe we can't kill him all of a sudden. Okay, there he is. He finally died. So I gave these guys quite a bit of health. But you'll notice what happens is, is uh, after that delay is over, look, poop, he pops right back in. Okay? So here's the gist of this. So you can mess with the respawn rate, right? And you can set that to whatever you want it to be. Uh, you can hit this drop down here and you can pick an animation, right? So we're going to put convo gesturing to side, right? And then for the death animation, I'm just going to go in here and put shoulder crawl. Okay, and then hit play. Now, he's going to sit there and he's just going to keep looping that animation over and over and over again, right? Uh, and then when we kill him, now he actually plays a death animation. And then once the death animation is over, he will go away. And then after that delay is over, he'll come right back and then you can kill him all over again. Now, these guys are likely to, uh, by the time this project is actually completed and ready for purchase, these guys will likely have sound effects. This guy's going to be sitting here talking to a rock or something. Man, this rock is so nice. You should check this thing out. No, oh, by the way, visit MoCap online for more of these animations that this one came from. Right? So it's going to be as an advertisement. That's why these guys are in here. But, you know... There'll be some funny instances. You'll be able to find them in some funny predicaments. And there's no likely telling what they're liable to say to you. And when you kill them, they're likely to say, Oh, you killed me. Oh, my God. Stop. Please don't shoot. Right? So it depends on if, you know, somebody uh, at Modus wants to record some sound effects for these guys. Uh, if they do, I'll probably go ahead and put them in. But if not, I don't necessarily think I'm going to do that. Right? That'd be something you guys could do, really. Uh, the people who buy this template. Okay, so now here's the gist of this. These things are editable. All these parameters are editable and unique, right? So what does that mean exactly, John Gall? Well, what that means is, is that I could take this character, right, that's already in this level, and I could hold down Alt and duplicate him and put one right beside him, and now they're both going to do the identical same thing. But... Let's say, for example, I want this one to be a completely different animation. Right? I select the one that I want to be the different animation. And I come over here and we're going to say that, uh, um, let's see, what would be a cool one here? Dance with his arms over his head and we're going to make him do a guts fallout death animation instead. So now, look. Now we have two identical characters. However, this one's doing something completely different than what this one's doing, right? Even though they both come from the same blueprint. So now when I kill this dude... See there, he plays a completely different death animation. And you could make him say different things too. Uh, you know, if that becomes a thing and that actually is added in here, uh, in the defaults, there'll be a different dialogue that you could plug in, uh, sound to make him say something different. Right? So that'd just be another uh, thing that currently this don't have. But if it does become a thing, remember, guys, this is still a work in progress. All this stuff is subject to change. But I want to go ahead and get started making these videos because there's going to be a bunch of them. Uh, and, you know, most of the information will remain valid. There's not going to be, you know, dramatic differences. But you may end up having more things in here that you can tamper with other than what's currently in here uh, in these default settings. Okay? Now, you can also change the skin of the character, right? So, if we want to make this character, this one, actually look like a zombie, if you come over here to the skeletal mesh, right? See it right here? You can actually change even his uh, skin. So, this one's actually got a zombie skin. Uh, we can change it. And now, he actually has a different skin, right? He looks more... Let me unselect that. Let me go to uh, unlit mode so you guys can see this better. So see there, he's got a completely different skin now than that dude does. 
So the guys at MoCap made a worn out version of the dummy, right? To make him more zombie like. And, you know, we may go in here and actually make these eyes glow and be emissive instead of that. I don't know, man. There's a million things we could do to this, but time is of the essence, right? I can't work on this forever more. I've been compensated for this, but, you know, it's coming to an end. Um, but anyway, you can change the skins out. So these are, you know, these are meant to be unique, right? So you can just drag these in the level wherever the hell you want them. You know, you can rotate them, make them face each other. Uh, you can come in here and you can change out and put, uh, you know, zombie. Uh, you, you could put, you know, this in, right? So if we come over here, hey, look, now he's sitting in a chair and there's no chair there. But, of course, you could put a chair under him, put a desk in front of him, right? But, uh, you know, literally, guys, these things are just drag and drop. And you don't have to copy them. You could actually bring in a completely new one. But, uh, you know, you'll have to position him how you want him. Right, and then once again, plug in these default values, change the spawn rate and stuff. All right, so I feel like I've covered that pretty good. These things are just drag and drop, literally. Wherever you want them, put them in your level. They're meant to just be goofy little props uh, that, hey, what the hell? Why is this guy sitting here on the phone? Screw it. All right, and then you can shoot him, and he may say something smart aleck to you or whatever. Okay? They don't have AI. They're not going to come after you. They're not going to chase you. They're just props, right? If you guys want, these are meant to entice you into buying more animation packs, right? So you can see that, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, seven. There's about 10 animations in here from various different packs that uh, the guys at MoCap online have for sale. There's metric chick tons of them in their actual pro packs and stuff. So these are meant to give you a little taste of what these animations look like. Uh, so that you will, you know, possibly buy the, their packs, okay? Uh, now, this project is going to come with all the animations that you've seen on this character, right? All these, the crouch and all that, this will come with that, but it will not come but with just a very few of these from anything other than the rifle or pistol pack. And this is not going to have the entire rifle and pistol pack animations in it. Only what was used in the creation of this template. And there's quite a few of them. Once again, I don't want to... I'm supposed to be talking about level design here, but I always end up getting off into areas I shouldn't be. Uh, but anyway, there's... Uh, you know, if we go to the... Uh, filters, and we go to animations, and go to animation sequences, you can see that there is a chit ton of animations in here. Right? So it comes with a bunch... Uh, in this project, enough to create what you've seen, this character's movement capabilities, but there's v far more in their packs, right? This is not using any of their transitions, like, you know, there's supposed to be a transition from crouch to crouch walk and stop. There's not. There's directional uh, animations. None of that stuff's implemented in this. This is a very simplistic, basic controller, right, that replicates, by the way, once again, this is all for multiplayer stuff, guys. All right, so now that I've covered the zombies, let's cover a couple more of these little assets, uh, and then that'll be a wrap on this video, okay? So there's a folder in here called Pickups, and there is a Ammo Master and a Health Master. Uh, these are some pickups that I created. These are masters. Uh, you can drag this into your level here, and... <clears throat> You can put these wherever you want them, right? And now you have an ammo pickup. So if you shoot up some ammo and do a reload, you can see that we've used up some, and now we can pick this up, and it gives us more ammo, right? Now, they also respawn. Shit, I guess I should have showed that. But anyway, we'll talk about it this way. So once again, these things are completely editable, right? So you can select your ammo thing, and once again, over here in the class defaults, you can see that you can punch in how much ammo it gives you. Right? So we can say, all right, this one's going to get 25. And the respawn timer is adjustable as well. Uh, we can say that it respawns every five seconds instead of 10. So now what will happen is...
we shot up 25 ammo and now this thing's set to give us 25 so this should top our ammo off now we're back to 200 and if we wait our five seconds you'll see that it'll just come back right so there it is and that once again is adjustable you can adjust the respawn rate and you can also adjust the uh how much ammo it gives you now the health pickup is and, and you, these are independent once again so i could drag another copy of this out and i can make this one only give you five ammo and this one respawns every one second instead of five right so now these are two completely independent pickups that do two completely different independent things right so now if I shoot this up, you can see that I have 191. The max capacity is 200. So if I pick it up, oh, look, it only gave me five. But look, it comes out every second, right? So that's what I mean by they're adjustable independently. You can have as many of these in your level, wherever you want them to be, and you can adjust them individually so that each one has completely different uh, parameters and statistics, right? Now the health, I'm not going to talk much about the health because the health is essentially the exact same thing. The only difference is it's for health instead of ammo. So as you can see, I have the health pickup selected here. It's got the same two parameters, how much health it gives and how often it respawns. And this is for if you get shot up, right? So you can uh, pick that up and get some health, okay? So those are two more of the items you can use for map creation. Now, the final one that I want to talk about is um, under the blueprints, there is a weapon station, right? And you can have as many of these in your level as you want to. Simply drag and drop. Uh, currently, there are no editable parameters on these things, meaning if you select one of them, there is nothing in here that you can adjust or change. Now, all this really is is a little station that you can go into to swatch, switch out your weapon. So you can see that I currently have the assault rifle. Well, if I want to try a different weapon, you enter the station, right? You just walk into it, and one through five buttons is what gives you weapons, right? So if I press number two, you're going to see that I now have a burst rifle, and it changes the name underneath the health bar, if you guys are wondering. So now this is a, a different weapon, right? So it differently. Uh, this one has scope capability where the other one does not, right? Um, other than that, it's, it's the same, right? And we're not going to talk about the weapon creation system yet, but there is a, a snazzy system in here for creating new weapons. Uh, this is just to be a map making thing, pretty much focusing only on the map creation side of things. Okay, so we can come back in here and we can press three. Now we have a shotgun. Right, so it shoots differently. Uh, we have a beam gun, which shoots differently. Uh, we have a rocket launcher, which shoots differently. And remember, I've got the debuggers and stuff changed. All, all the work in progress, guys. It's really close to being ready, by the way. Uh, but it's just not quite yet. Uh, I'm still bug testing and stuff like that, but I wanted once again to get a head start on these videos To show you guys uh, what all this templates capable of doing and uh, This is just really focusing on the map side of things um, and then the final thing guys is the uh, player starts Now This is set up with a random respawn right so when you die in this level uh, the way this works is, is it will pick one of your player starts. Uh, so if we come over here to basic, you're going to see that there's a player start, right? So you can put as many of these in your level wherever you want them to be, right? You know, you can put them way back here. And what will happen is, is now when I die, so let me see if I can kill myself. Uh, let's pick the beam gun and let me shoot myself so now when I die in my level and I press P P is for respawn and there'll be a, uh, a document at the very least to show you what all the buttons are for uh, you press P and it'll respawn and it'll pick one of them player starts at random and put you at one of them 
So just as a pro tip here, if you guys uh, at MoCap are going to be creating your own maps and stuff with this, here's what you should do, right? Wherever you've got your little ad advertisements, right? You would want to put a player start near there so that when a player dies and he respawns, he gets a look at your assets, right? Now, these also have a direction. You can see the blue. You might not be able to see it too good, but see the blue arrow? Uh, that's which direction the character will face, right? So if you want them to face your props here, uh, you know, and once again, I don't know if I'd ever get this to happen at random, but really you would, guys at Mo, MoCap, you guys would want to put your respawns wherever you want people to, re, to see your advertisements. So you can see that I spawned here, so now I get to see your animations. Hey, buy our animations, right? And then you can go run around. So everywhere you put one of your little uh, guys, you know, they're going to be making maps and stuff. I'm not a map maker. Uh, and besides that, you know, I've done quite as much, about as much of this as I can do for the amount of money that I was compensated. If I go much further than this, I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do anymore until I get more money. Uh, but anyway, you know, if you guys build yourselves a map and you put these characters around... You would want to put your your respawns near them so that somebody playing this template in the demo version, right? This is going to have a version you can download for free and play. And I'll be doing another stream specifically focused on that uh, aspect of this demo whenever the time comes. Showing you how you can download the demo and play it with your friends on Steam together as a multiplayer uh Deathmatch, arena, no teams or any of that stuff. Everybody can kill everybody, including you can kill the dummies, right? Uh, but, you know, when you guys respawn, you'll you'll be respawning at an area with a little prop area set up so that, you know, they can uh, demo their uh, product, okay? That's how you guys get this for free. It's an advertisement. He'll let, the guys at MoCap are going to let you play this, just like a game, right? It's just, you know, not a completed game. It's a template. It's a demo. Okay? But, yeah, you guys will be able to play it with your friends. You both can download it, and one can host, and the other can join. And you guys can PvP the crap out of each other. Uh, and in the meantime, they're going to be advertising their other animation packs. And this template, by the way. Okay? So the people that buy the template, they're going to get access to all this source code, if you will. All the blueprints, they'll be able to open them up and look at them and see how it was created. They can add things on to whatever the you know core template ends up being when it's finished. They can start adding unique game modes and make it capture the flag all of a sudden, right? I'm not taking it that far. It's going to be, hey, here's all these replicating mechanics. You can run around and kill each other, but if you want game modes and you know altercations to it, you're going to have to do those yourself. I don't want to pigeonhole somebody into... It happened to be a particular type of game. So at this point, you can create team deathmatch. You could create free for all. You could create co-op, uh, PVE. You could add AI, right? So you can carry it on from here wherever you wish for it to go. Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, guys, I think this is where I'm going to end the stream at. Okay. Um, you know, actually, here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead and. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, not save this, and I'm going to put this back to the default map that this comes with. Uh, I just wanted to go in-depth more about how this map, uh, or how this is set up, right? Now, remember, guys, in the first of this video, we talk about some caveats about this, right? Here's one more caveat. Uh, the only way that you can change weapons is if you have a rifle either in the relaxed rifle or the aiming rifle. If you have your pistol equipped, there's not going to be but one pistol. Right? So there's no need for you to be changing into a different pistol. I've only set this up to have one pistol. A pistol is a pistol is a pistol is a pistol. Right? Uh, so if you go in this station and you try to press one through five, it's not going to let you change. Right? You're going to have to press Q and make sure you have a rifle either aiming or relaxed. And then you can come in here and switch to try out a different gun, okay? That's the other caveat. So now I'm going to go ahead and 
kill all this and we're going to go back to the um, the map that this actually comes with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that project and we're going to unzip a fresh version of this. So we're going to say uh, extract files and we're going to put this in my Unreal Projects folder, my documents, Unreal Projects. We're just going to put it in here. Okay, so now this will be roughly how this thing comes already set up so we're going to talk a little bit about this uh and then that'll be a wrap on the live stream okay and once again this video will be archived it's likely to be downloaded and made available on Mo mocap's website as well in case my youtube ever implodes they need to have these uh somewhere so that they're this is their template right this is not mine i was contracted to create this so send all inquiries to them. And once again, I'm going to be trying to make a lot of videos documenting how exactly you use this template. So there'll be videos about how you bring in a new weapon and create one from it, a new weapon model, how you attach it to the character. There'll be, there'll be a chit ton of videos for this. This one just happens to be mostly about the map, how you create a new map, how you can alter the map that already exists with the template, if you screw it up, how you could go and create one from scratch, you just have to follow, make sure you follow those caveats. You need that information out of the level blueprint it has to be in every level that you create. That information has to be in there. Okay. Uh, so really, I'm just going to spawn in here and show you guys a little bit about the map that it comes with. Right. So once again, I've already got this, the random respawn point set up. Where, wherever, whenever you die, you're going to spawn near uh, some something like this. Like these are some zombies just hanging out in here, being derpy. You can kill them and they'll respawn. Uh, they got a spotlight shining on them. Um, you got stairs you can go up, right? And you can go all the way up top. Here's a guy on the phone, you know, and he's getting cussed out by this guy, you know. Uh, there's some health pickups everywhere. There's ammo sta or weapon stations. There's a guy dancing here all of a sudden because he's cool like that. And uh, here's two guys talking about this health pickup. This guy's telling him in order to win, right, you need to use health pickups. And this guy's calling him a noob saying the only noobs use health packs. I never need them, right? And then this guy over here is cutting a groove, right? He's dancing and this guy's giving him a slow golf clap. Oh, that's great, man. I love your dances. You're so smooth. Right? So really, it's, you know, just a little derpy map that I put together. Uh, I tried to make it where you can't get out. So that's the purpose of all these hills off in the distance. And, and this, you know, this may or may not come with this particular map, but it will come with a map. Uh, either this one or one that the guys at MoCap create. This is just something I put together, you know, just so that you're not standing in a big open field with nothingness. And uh, so the idea will be that you guys can run around and PvP each other uh, to your heart's content in the demo uh, to get an idea of how the template mechanics work, how it plays, uh, you know, what some of these animations that are for sale look like, plus the animations that are integrated in this project, being in all the ones this gray dude's using. All right, so it's got reloads and swap weapons and turn in place it so uh oh oh well it looks like it's coming back so uh yeah i don't know it just i had an internet hiccup so uh anyway i don't know how much of that cut out but really i was just running around showing this map and once again you can just go ahead and delete all this you can start from scratch just make sure you follow the caveats in the first of this video so we don't get hate mail saying that this thing's broken it's not broken right uh, you guys will just have to uh, watch that video, and if you decide you want to just nuke this whole map and start from scratch, you can. You just have to follow the guidelines set forth in this video. Okay? And with that, uh, yeah, I believe I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. More so, I hope you guys enjoy this template. Uh, you know, there'll be more videos to show you guys more about this template and what it contains. Uh, just look, be on the lookout for those and I'll try to put these all in one playlist whenever I get them all made 
uh, so that they'll be easier for you guys to find and stuff. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I uh, appreciate anyone who happened to catch this live, which probably is nobody. But uh, anybody, anyone who watches this after the fact, this is John Galt. Guys, contact MoCap online. Their website link is in the description of this video. Contact them about the inquiry. Hey, when's this going to be available? I don't know. Soon-ish. Uh, how much is it going to cost? I don't know. That'll be for them to decide, okay? But uh, it will be available soon. Um, I'm not going to give an exact date, but I'm shooting for the end of this month, right? I'll be done with my part. Now, whether they make it available immediately after I'm done or not, I don't know. But I plan on being done with this at least by the end of the month. But really, I think about another week and I'll be uh, pretty much done with my end of things, okay? So with that, uh, you guys take care. This is John Galt, and we will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, fellas.